Hi folks, in today's video, I'm doing a quick comparison on basic versions of two of the more popular compact gimbals today, DJI Ronin SC and the Zhiyun Weeble S. Before we go any further though, I'd really like to know what you thought about the intro. Cool or mm, nah? You like the lights, the slides, and the music? Whatever, just, just let me know in the comments. So, you probably ended up here because you're in the market for a compact gimbal and are eyeing one of these two, or you already own one of them and want to know if the grass is greener on the other side. Hopefully this video helps you out. So it's gonna be broken down into the following sections. If you're interested in only a specific part, you can jump straight to it. We're gonna talk about the similarities and differences as well as my own personal thoughts. Now. I won't go too in depth on the software side since I find things like active track or motion control pretty gimmicky and I really not only use them other to, than to try them out when the gimbals were new. And I can cover those in another video anyway. If it's your first time here, I do photography and videography related content like tutorials, gear reviews, and behind the scenes videos. If that's something you're into, maybe consider subscribing and that'll be much appreciated. Let's get to it. Both gimbals start at $439 for their basic packages, and that gets you the gimbals, cables needed to connect them to cameras, and their tripod legs. The DJI box doubles as its carrying case, while the Zeons, it's just really a box to store it in. To be honest, that doesn't really matter to me, and I'm guessing a lot of you, since I'm looking at a compact gimbal to pack it into my camera bag anyway. And if I didn't mind lugging around a separate case for my gimbal, I probably would have just stuck with the less compact but more capable Ronin S. I believe that if it's small enough to bring in the same bag as the rest of your gear, you'll probably end up using it more often, which is kind of the point. Now, DJI additionally also ships a phone mount for use with their active track and the Weeble does not. Let's move on to build quality and design. Both gimbals are built very well, with the Ronin SE have a slight edge in terms of how premium it feels. Now, this is largely due to the materials used in the handle, where the Ronin has a thicker, longer rubberized grip. That's what she said. While the Weeble S grip is made of textured plastic. To be honest, you won't really notice the difference until you use them and compare them side by side. They both come with quick release plates which allow you to use them with your other accessories like tripods, sliders, etc. that use the same mount. Um, in this case, they both have Arca Swiss plates. The Weeble S plate actually is a dual plate that can also be used with Manfrotto. This also doesn't matter to me since I use an Arca Swiss quick release plate instead of the camera risers included in the kit so I can use it with my Peak Design Clip. Both gimbals also have locks for each individual axis, allowing for easier balance and storage. DJI's locks are a little easier to use because of their teeth, unlike the smoother locks for the Zion, which have led to problems locking or unlocking an axis a few times. It's not a big deal, but it happened. Now adjustments on each axis are done differently with DJI using smaller thumb screws while Zion uses longer levers similar to the locking mechanism on the Ronin SC's battery. I prefer Zion's choice here since it is easier to lock and unlock. Buttons on either gimbal are responsive but I prefer the clicky buttons on the Weeble over the squishy ones of the Ronin. Now on the other hand, the Ronin does have the better joystick allowing you to do more precise movements with it compared to the thumbstick on the Weebill. They feel like the joysticks on their drones. Their buttons offer the same functionality, though they may differ in how they're done for each one. The Weebill also has the advantage of having an LCD screen, which allows you to make changes to settings on the gimbal and even controlling some camera settings if used with a supported camera. I've never adjusted any settings on either gimbal using the app though and find that their auto-tune functions, which can be initiated on the gimbals themselves, have worked well enough for my needs. Now your mileage may vary. They're both small enough when broken down that they'll fit into most reasonably sized bags and 
for reference, I use a Peak Design 20L, which can take them without much difficulty. From a payload perspective, the Ronin SC's documentation states that it can handle 2 kilogram loads, while the Weeble S doesn't have any number listed. It's just a really long, exhaustive list of compatible camera and lens combinations. And I'll link that list in the description. Zion's better in this regard, not only because it can handle heavier setups, but it's also not as picky as the Ronin, which has problems with some setups whose weight it can handle. For example, it can handle the Tamron 28-75 with the Sony a7 III, but you'd need to remove the eye cup so that it doesn't hit the roll motor, so that it doesn't hit the roll motor when moving into flashlight mode. Both gimbals are easy to balance because of their individual axis locks. And personally, I think the Weeble is slightly easier to balance because of what I mentioned earlier about how their adjustments are secured with the levers and because it has slightly longer arms, making it less picky on the camera and lens combinations you can stick on it. Now for performance, I took some footage with both gimbals to see how they do. And I did a couple of scenarios while my wife filmed me while doing them. So you can check on my technique and get a better estimation of what to expect. I shot on the Sony a7 III with Tamron lenses either at 17 or 35 millimeters. Now that you've seen the footage, what do you think? Personally, I think they both do a great job at stabilizing footage, which is what matters anyway. Out of the box, however, I prefer how the Ronin SE feels, except in underslung, which the Weeble S does better. You can, however, purchase attachments for either gimbal anyway to customize it for your needs, and well, feel free to pimp out your gimbal however you see fit. Now for battery life, um, now I've, I've used both gimbals for long shoots and have yet to run out their batteries completely, even after shooting for around 8 hours. I will say however that you should check your settings when using the Weeble so that you don't charge the camera with the gimbal while using it so its battery life isn't impacted. The Ronin can't charge a connected camera so no problems there. Now. Even if you do choose to charge your camera with the Weeble, you can easily replace the Weeble S's 18, 16, 50 batteries since you can buy cheap spares at around 20 bucks a pair. The Ronin SC's battery is also its grip and costs more for a spare at around $80. But more importantly, it also takes up way more space because they're like this big. Now, at the end of the day, they're both really good gimbals and you'd be happy with either. I do prefer the Weeble S, however. Even though the Ronin SC has a slight edge in build quality, comfort, and software. Simply because I have more freedom in terms of the camera and lens combinations I can use on it. If I were purely a small prime user, I would probably stick with the Ronin SC. But since I'm not and I want the flexibility, I'm going with the Weeble S. How about you guys? 
let me know in the comments. So I think that's it. I hope you found this comparison helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to see my future content. And if you have further questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Links to the gimbals and accessories used to make this video will also be in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next one. That's a wrap. Hey guys. So today we are talking about what? About the airplane that's passing over. What's this one?